Today I want to show you something that will blow your mind and you will ask yourself where is the world going when it comes to investments. Come with me. Let's see. I just went online, looked at the most expensive NFTs lately. Look at this man. Look at this. One of them we just sold recently actually called every days the first 5000 days is an artwork. It sold for 69 million dollars. I'm going to say again. 69 million dollars. Oh my god. <laughs> Where the heck is the world going to man? Where is it going to? Things are getting more complex, more interesting, but man, this is crazy. So this was an auction of an artwork that sold for 69 million US dollars. That's enough money to run your life, your child's life, your grandchildren's lives. If you conserving wealth, that's good money. The second one is called CryptoPunk. This pixel thing, right? Sold for 11 million. And this is becoming very common in the NFT world. 11 million dollars. Very common in the NFT world. CryptoPunk, another one, 7 million. CryptoPunk, another one, 7 million. All of these things. Crossroad is an NFT created by acclaimed digital artist people. It features anti-Trump messaging and an enlarged Donald Trump. I've seen it, by the way. It looks gross. It looks gross. But look at the price. Look at the price, guys. Look at the price. 6.6 .6 million US dollars. Look at that, man. Ugly, ugly, ugly thing. Sold for so, so much. Oceanfront. 6 million on artwork again, again by people. CryptoPunk again, you need to start creating CryptoPunks if you want to sell NFTs. A World Wide Web source code, look at that, just a code, a code. Yeah, and another CryptoPunk. Stay free, yeah. Save thousands of lives. That was 5 million. Some of the most expensive NFTs, CryptoPunk again, we haven't spoken about the one that was sold by the founder of Twitter. His first tweet was sold for a whopping $6 million. Guys, people are selling stuff out here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Africa, stand up right now. Let's sell stuff. We have lots of unique stuff. Lots of them. And we have lots of artists. We have very creative people. We have now the access to technology. We have everything we need. This is Money Matters as usual. Here we talk about the money mindset, how to make that money, how to enjoy that money, how to manage that money, how to invest that money, and how to assure yourself a lifetime of income basically financial freedom today as you have seen i'm going to be talking about nfts nfts what's nfts what do we mean by nfts it's just taking the internet by storm people are making millions the other day you had a musician just sold two million copies in a few seconds you know and another one in south africa has been doing two million in a few days two million copies sold and it's crazy nfts man nfts 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 everything nfts the other day it was crypto, 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 now it's NFT, NFT. People are making money and I believe that we all have the opportunity too. And the way this world is evolving, however much you do not want to just plunge into this investment without any research and any information, you also want to know what's happening. You want to be aware. If you are someone who's building wealth, you need to be very aware. Don't just put your mind on the same thing you have been investing in and forget about everything else that's happening. I am someone who's very aware. I don't invest in very crazy stuff or very aggressive stuff, I would say, but I'm very aware. I know exactly what's going on. I read a lot. I do a lot of research. I've been doing a lot of research on NFTs lately, and therefore I understand what's happening despite me probably not getting in as fast or just rushing in, but I do know what's happening because I also deal with so many clients that I need to advise and tell what's happening. And the NFT world right now is opening up. Things are happening, amazing, amazing stuff are happening. How should Africans take advantage? So we're going to look at the meaning of NFTs and then we're going to look at how African countries can just stay on top of this game because this is something that's open for everyone. There are ways in which NFT can actually revolutionize so many things in Africa. We need to tell people to use them and I'll tell you how. So NFT, non-fungible token, that's what it means. Did I just lose you? Non-fungible, what does it even mean? When we say non-fungible, it just means it cannot be replaced. So in economics, 
the fungibility of something makes it equivalent or its value equivalent with something else. Now, if something is non-fungible, it means that you cannot replace it. You can't replace it with something else. It's unique on its own. Its value is based on its own self, in its scarcity, in its uniqueness, in its creation, in whatever it is. So this is something already you're thinking of things like art, collectibles, you know. So non-fungible token. So the token part, the token part is basically what is allocated to it. On the blockchain technology, which is something you know from cryptocurrencies and stuff, on the blockchain technology, you are in a position to now create certain tokens that represent a particular digital asset. So a digital asset here would mean anything that is online. Now, why is this even happening? Number one, we're having a lot of creations online. We're having a lot of things that are not physical and someone wants to keep that value to themselves. So the same way in a normal world, people always bought art, for example. You bought very interesting, very unique kind of art, some very interesting collectibles like classic cars, some kind of real estate. You bought some unique sneakers. So there, there are different things that are very unique that you'd want to retain ownership and originality of that. And therefore, for you to retain that originality and that ownership, you need something in the blockchain, basically trying to decentralize that sector. So it's a very simple concept. You have a particular digital or an digital asset, and then you create a token. A token is created for that asset under Ethereum blockchain. So it's the Ethereum cryptocurrency that has this platform whereby you can create these tokens. So the same way you could have different codes that represent different transactions, now you have certain codes or blockchains that would represent your digital asset or sometimes you even say physical asset that you actually have. In a simple term, I always say this is just basically you are getting a digital contract, okay, for a digital asset. How do you do that? By tracking it under certain blockchain technology. And right now, the most popular one is Ethereum. So if you own Ethereum, then you are easily compatible with, you know, the NFT blockchain technology. So like I've just said, basically, you having a certain token that represent a particular digital asset or non-digital asset, and you are the only person with that particular token. You can basically say, I have the original art of this and this and this. I have the original tweet. You know, I bought the original tweet from the founder of Twitter, and therefore I'm the one keeping that value. So that token represents your value. That token represents the value of that particular tweet. So in the whole world, anywhere else, you will not find another blockchain code that represents that tweet. So you're the only one. So unless you transfer it to someone else by selling it or anything like that, you cannot copy and paste it. You cannot reproduce that particular code or that particular token. And like I said, it's stored under blockchain technology, which is the Ethereum. Okay. So of course, other cryptocurrencies would also have that same platform. But so far, it's Ethereum that has a compatible platform for these NFTs. Hope that makes sense. So basically, you're trying to own a digital asset or a virtual asset, but you allocate a very specific token to it. And that token is basically stored under a blockchain technology. And currently, that is only done under Ethereum. Like I say, all other cryptocurrencies can also support that or can also come up with their own platforms that support this kind of NFTs. So what are some of the things that could actually allocate to NFT or say this can be an NFT? can be an artwork, can be music, can be videos, can be memes, can be GIFs. And like you just saw on my introduction, those are all basically artwork that are digital. So basically anything that you feel that there is value to it. And remember, when you're saying there's value to it, people must be interested in it. Because if I have something that people are not interested in, then the value is useless. Remember, we give value to stuff. We give value to all these things. We give value to the first tweet. We give value to... Uh, particular art, right? So that's why you say there's only one art produced by this particular person in the whole world. That particular original art is given value by people. And remember, people can also lose interest in something and it becomes just valueless. So number one thing is you want to know if it's something that's valuable. So if you want to, for example, NFT your fingers or your legs or your, your teeth, make sure that people have interest in that and people will actually put value to it, we give value to things. Like unique digital artwork, unique sneakers, gaming items, essays, digital collectibles, domain names, tickets, if you buy a ticket, for example, to some kind of concert. So I want you to think of this more like art collection. There are people who are very passionate about certain things. Recently, Logan Paul sold some very interesting stuff as NFTs, and he earned lots of money from it. But it's from people who actually 
felt that they needed what Logan Paul was offering or they felt there was some value to what he was offering and therefore they were able to push the prices so high. So why do we need NFTs anyways? Like I said, you need ownership. Some people just need bragging rights. Some people just need to know that I own the first tweet. Some people just need to know that I own this art that is so famous. So it's just bragging rights for most people. Number two, you could also sell them and have some gains. So if you buy an NFT today and then you return it and then the value goes high, you make lots of money out of it. You can also end up creating your own NFTs. So you can also come up with your way or your collectibles or your NFT foundation or whatever it is and come up with things that you want to sell as NFT online. For me, I think the biggest thing that NFTs can help with is it can help artists get lots of money from their own creation. So if you create something, you can now sell it as NFT and every single person who buys a copy, they own that original copy. Even though they own the original copy, you can still earn from the transfer of all the original copies. So there's a way in which artists can really use this platform to increase their revenue. And some people are using it already. They're making millions and millions. Right now, there are videos that are selling from the NBA, interesting short clips from the NBA that have been selling crazily online. So what problem are NFTs solving? So most people are saying that every single thing is becoming digital, every single thing. And therefore, there is a need to come up with ways in which people can own things in a digital way. You can prove your ownership digitally. So for example, if you own even real estate, if you own certain things like cars, your ownership can be proved using that blockchain technology. So you can basically open your Ethereum wallet and tell someone, okay, here is my deed that shows I'm the owner of that house. Here is my deed that shows I'm the owner of that car. So that is the key. That will be the key to your house, the key to your car, the key to whatever it is that you own in this life. So what these people are thinking about is as the world become digitalized, they want to come up with ways of proving ownership or of retaining ownership. And again, of course, of retaining originality, because again, people used to collect stuff, very unique stuff, you know, and keep them for years and years and years and years because there was very deep attachment to those original stuff. But now, most things that people will be collecting can be digital. You don't have to collect a physical thing. You don't have to have a non-digital asset for you to be known as having collectibles. So how do you ensure that these digital assets that you have can also be directly linked to you such that nobody else can claim ownership of the original one? Now, how can Africa benefit from this? In my opinion, I do think this is a great opportunity for Africa, not just because we have lots of unique stuff, because we do have lots of unique stuff, but because we have a lot of creativity, we have now this platform, which is almost equal. Of course, it won't be, ever be equal as such, but it's almost equal. Therefore, people can benefit and use it from now on. Crypto world is already expanding in Africa and so many people are interested in it. So many people are getting into it. If you can use it to find ways of making money when you produce content, then Africa could use this opportunity to push their content to the world. We could also use this platform effectively to ensure that creators are in a position to benefit from the content that they create. Because this is something that we have struggled with in Africa and this is something that can actually change the way we make money, the way our artists make money, the way music is gonna make money, the way things like videos are gonna make money. People are creating like memes, for example. So we have to start thinking how can we create content that we can also have on this kind of platform and push it out to the world. That's number one way. Number two is the uniqueness of a lot of stuff in Africa. There are so many things that we have as Africans that nobody else does. So if someone is pushing something that they believe is unique to them and there's a community of people that believe in that thing so much that they push the prices up, us as Africans, if we support each other, if we support our own staff and we push those prices up, because like I said, it's the interest of people that make something valuable. It's the interest of other people that will make something that I own valuable. So if I say this particular jumper was the first one that was made, I don't know with whom and whom in Africa, then we can basically say this is an NFT, create a token for it, and the prices will be crazy. But people have to be interested, right? You must create a community around it. So this is an opportunity for Africans, especially the young people, to support creators, support people who create digital contents, support people who create certain things online that cannot be created somewhere else again. So like I said, this is an opportunity for people to go global. This is an opportunity to globalize content creation, globalize lots of certain things that we have as Africans. It's an opportunity to return your work, return the right over your work, but still earn lots of royalties and money from it and make sure that you are always benefiting from whatever it is that you have created. There have always been a disconnect between the creation and benefiting from it directly because the structures have never been so systematized. But right now, if you have this platform whereby you can systematize that process by yourself, 
then you don't need anyone. You just need to do it in a way that you, you globalize your platform, you globalize your creation and you make sure that's pushed out there. So in Africa, for example, we still have lots of fiscal assets. That space is still developing quite well. That is something we can utilize with this particular platform to push out to the world. We have ways in which you can now, now globalize our content creation. We have ways of retaining ownership of content and still pushing it out there. And then there's the boosting of gaming potential. The gaming industry is a big, big industry. And a lot of young people in Africa are also in this particular industry. If you get into that industry and you come up with ways in which you can create some amazing NFTs, then it's a big, big market for young people who can then go out into the world and create amazing stuff that could be valuable, valuable in the next few years. You never know what happens. You never know who supports you. You never know who picks it up. It becomes really, really valuable. And of course, maximizing earnings for creators. You have to maximize your earnings as much as possible. So just to mention, there are different places you can find NFTs because it's important to know where you're going to find if you want to buy NFTs. There are very many marketplaces that have popped up around this subject of NFTs. And these places would allow people then to buy and sell NFTs. And this include OpenSea, uh, Rarible, Grimm's Choice, Nifty Gateway, and many, many, many others. There are so many places you can buy NFTs. Guys, I hope this has helped you at least get a, a basic foundation of what it is. But remember, we're gonna do a lot of research on this. We're gonna get to know way more because I'm still reading lots of lots of information. It's a deep topic. It gets connected with decentralized finance, with cryptocurrency, physical world, some level, with content creation, and so many other things that are connected. Therefore, to understand it, you need to take time, be patient, and read as much as possible. But I hope this gives you a foundation of what these NFTs are. Thank you, guys. And please subscribe, comment, and share. See you next time.